Dear Mark, we would like to invite you to be a keynote speaker at our upcoming conference in New Orleans. We believe your presentation on selling happiness would be of great value for our members. As we do not pay our speakers, we would be more than happy to provide you with two tickets to the trade show and all education sessions, plus two nights accommodations. All you would have to do is arrange travel. Good Mark TV morning. Now, if you're a professional speaker, well, you've probably gotten offers like that, but even if you're not, there's a good chance that people have asked you to work for free. Now, they might be kind of subtle about it. If you're a lawyer, they might ask you to go out for coffee with them and, well, maybe just share some advice on something specific and they just want your feedback. Or maybe you're a plumber and they're saying, well, next time you're in the area, would you mind dropping by and helping me fix that leaky faucet? Or you might be a consultant and they just want to run a few things by you and get your input and thoughts and maybe some recommendations. Either way, these are things that people want you to do that are your core profession. You charge for them and yet people will ask you to do them for free. Now, a lot of people will tell you this is because you haven't properly conveyed the true value of what you provide and they partially be right. I mean, after all, if you don't look professional or dress professionally or act professionally, if your website, your literature, your business card, your logo, all your collateral, how you convey yourself, how you show you and your company, if none of that is professional, if you appear to be doing this kind of as a side gig and having fun doing it, well, people will be less likely to want to pay you because nobody's going to pay for something that you're having fun doing. And while they might partially be right, I think there's more to it than that. You see, we live in a world now where you can go online and get people to do almost anything for your business for $5. You can also do crowdsourcing where you can ask people to work for potentially hours on end and you only pay for the one you like, which means everyone else is essentially worked for free. Now I don't see this situation changing anytime soon. In fact, maybe even getting worse. So what can you do as a business owner to let the world know that you don't work for free, that you provide value and that what you have is worth paying for? Well, the first thing you have to do is say no, as in no, you're not going over to that house to fix a leaky faucet. No, you're not going to sit down with someone over a cup of coffee and share an hour's worth of legal advice. And in my case, no, I'm not going to pay out of pocket for a plane ticket to fly to New Orleans to speak for free. The minute you start letting people know that you are willing to give your time, expertise and knowledge for free, trust me, word will spread fast and you will get a lot of people expecting it. Now the second thing I think you need to do to prevent people from asking you to work for free or expecting you to work for free is to let them know about your track record, that being like your portfolio or testimonials or anything you can show to demonstrate the fact that you haven't just started this business like, oh, like this morning. Because if you've been around a while, or at least appear that way, and you've done real jobs for real pay, people will assume that's how you work. Now I understand this can be more difficult when you have a company that provides only a service. After all, a service is basically just your time. You have no real inventory. So a lot of people assume, well, it's not costing you anything out of pocket. So why couldn't you just do me a favor and give it to me for free? Well, the fact is time is actually the most valuable thing we have. Once it's given away or spent, you never get it back. It's not like money where you can earn it back. You can replenish that bank account. And it's important to you as a business owner to put value on that time and don't be afraid to let your customers know that it is valuable, that it is important, that it is something you only have so much of. Now, if you want to spend extra time with a customer or extra time on a project, that's okay. It's your choice. But I want you to keep in mind that hour that you put in that you're not going to charge for, well, that's an hour you're not going to get back. Is it worth it? Do you see it as an expense or do you see it as an investment in building a stronger relationship with your customer? If you see it as a relationship builder, as an investment, then go ahead. But before you do, I want to give you one key piece of advice. 
If you're going to give away your time in any way, shape or form, I still want you to invoice your client. I still want you to send them a piece of paper that says what you did and how much time you spent doing it. Then discount it. Put in a separate item saying preferred client discount or something to that effect and make it equal to the amount that you charged. And that piece of paper with those numbers on it can be incredibly powerful for letting people know exactly what you're worth and what your time is worth and more importantly what you're giving them and that it has value. Because if people get something that has no value they won't appreciate it. But if someone sees an invoice for $200 and it's been discounted $200 they will subconsciously understand that they've gotten something worth that amount of money. All I have to do is figure out how I want to reply to this email without well, possibly damaging a relationship but letting them know that I don't work for free. Now if you think there's another way I could handle this situation or something specific I should write back to them, let me know. Post your comments down below. You know I'll answer back. And to learn more about Mark TV or see more Mark TV episodes, just visit marktv.net right there. And if you're watching this on LinkedIn or Facebook, I encourage you to click on the link above or below wherever it is and subscribe to marktv.net to get notified of new Mark TV episodes. So until next time, I'm Mark Gordon and as always, you've been watching Mark TV.